Hey everybody, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In the last video, I ran through the process of creating the CAD and the CAM for the part that I'm about to machine. So I'm out in the garage. It's a little crowded right now. We're actually getting about 60 mile an hour winds and a storm coming through. So I got everything in here, cars, snowblowers, everything, places packed. But still plenty of room to get to the machine and do some machining. So I've got the sile behind me. I've got it all loaded up with the part that we're gonna machine. So let's hop over and take a look at the tool paths as they cut on the machine. with a 3S inch 5 fluid helical tools end mill, 400 service foot, 4,074 RPM, 0 0.002 inches per tooth, a feed rate of 40 inches a minute, 10,000 step down, 0.356 step over at 90% of the tool. Gonna slide into the adaptive operation using the same tool, 400 service foot, 4,074 RPM, 0 0.002 IPT, and a feed rate of 40 inches a minute, stepping down 0.227 with an optimal load of 0.045, more at 12% of the tool diameter. Super happy with how this tool performed in the machine. It just ripped through the steel, no problem. This is 1018 steel, so not super hard. Here's our second adaptive going down, same feeds and speeds, but this time it's stepping down 0.355 inches. Again, it's absolutely just even through the material, not even flying. Switching into a 2D contour, you can see I could have got my plunge a little bit better. Uh, taking a 10,000 radial and axial step over with a repeat finishing pass, running the exact same sur surface footage as the last operations and feed for teeth and feed roll. Now I'm going to do a 2D contour around the entire part to clean up the entire profile. Same feeds and speeds, 400 surface foot, tooth out per tooth. Turned on the option to keep sharp corners using a repeating finishing pass or a spring pass to get it to the final size. Gonna switch over to my spot drill, which is a quarter inch spot drill, two flute. I'm running a surface footage of 90 for this tool, which works out to 1,375 RPM. It's only going 30,000 steep, and so this is gonna be a fast operation. Gonna change out to my tap drill, which is a 2764 two flute high speed steel drill. Again, I'm running at 90 surface foot or about 814 RPM. Taking six thou per peck, no retract. Gotta thank Neil Balduck for this one. Uh, he gave me this recipe and it worked great. I've had aluminum drilling uh, operations that have been louder than what this was. So it's really great to be steel and really happy with it. All right, now I'm gonna to switch to the thread mill, which is a half inch four flute thread mill from Harvey Tool. It has a 0.388 cutting diameter and a quarter inch neck diameter. Now, looking back at it, I wish I would have bought a different tool. And the reason is what you can see in the screen right there is that's the neck diameter. That's five times the diameter of the neck. So really sticking this out a long way. I wish I would have got a shorter tool. I thought it'd be more versatile and it was just slightly more expensive than the shorter tools. When I got it uh, in my hand and put it in the tool holder, I realized it was really long. So I'm being a little conservative with this tool path. I only bought one of these and I didn't want to break it before I could finish the tool path. This is running at 400 surface foot, which works out to about 3,938 RPM at 0.001 inches per tooth or a feed rate of about eight inches per minute. I'm doing five step overs on this tool path, again, being really conservative, at seven thou per step over. When I looked at the Harvey website, they recommended 20 thou per step over, and it might have worked, I just didn't want to push it. The other thing that you'll probably uh, hear as I shut up is every time it goes a little bit deeper, it gets a little louder, and that's because more of the tool is engaging in the material. And so each cut just takes a little bit more and more material as it gets deeper into the material. You also see I've got the flood coolant running on this. Very small amount of tools engaged in the material. And so it's a large heat affected zone. Actually a small heat affected zone, very concentrated. So I wanted to make sure to run coolant on this so I didn't break the tool. 
We're just about wrapped up with this one. I'll let you listen to the final operation. Mm -hmm. take you in and have a look at this part so if I get down here one thing you can see is I get really close to the vice jaws however I gave it a good check and I knew I wasn't gonna hit it so the other thing I'm curious about is uh, there's my surface finish everything's coming pretty good but can I get let's switch over can I get that to thread in so there's my half 13 and the fit is really good so really happy with how this fits there's just a tiny amount of, of play but it's really tight so uh, that finishes the top side let me flip this over and get it set up for op 2 all right here I go with the same five fluid three eighths inch in the mill running the same feeds and speeds of the last adaptives although this is a 3d adaptive but 400 surface foot 4074 rpm 2000 feet per tooth 40 inches a minute it's going down about point uh, 177 and no problems at all i might even have been able to speed this up but uh, didn't really need to it doesn't take that long sounds great uh, cut just worked really well it didn't take very long at all to get through this material Gonna switch that same facing operation using the same parameters as the first side. So 400 service foot, 4,074 RPM, only going 10,007 inch deep. Pretty fast operation here to clean this up, and that'll wrap up the machine on this part. Okay, here's the finished part. Super happy with the quality of the finish, service finish, all that good stuff. But now the important part is, will it fit? I bring it over here and there we go it's in the t-slot it works so pretty happy all these are coming out good I got about 12 more to make so I'm gonna get to making all the rest of these I hope you guys enjoyed watching that video footage I have to say thanks to a couple people uh, Tim Paul at Autodesk for some feeds and speeds guidance along with Neil Balduck who also gave me some feeds and speed guidance both of those guys are pretty accomplished machinists that work in steel a lot more than I do. Like I said, this is the very first time that I cut steel with this ILX7. Wasn't sure what to expect. I thought it would do just fine and it completely blew me away. It beat my expectations for what I thought was gonna happen. Handled the cuts just fine. The service finishes came out great. It gave me a lot of confidence to move forward with some other steel parts that I have in mind to make. So keep an eye out for those. Maybe even something I'm gonna sell. I wanted to cover just one small change on the cam side that I did for this video, and that is if we look down in this hole, you'll see a magenta point down there. And what I ended up doing was putting a sketch on that face right there, and I put a, work, uh, a sketch point that I used. And when I put this part in the vise, I rested my parallels on this face and this face, and I clamped down on these two faces. So I changed that up a little bit, so I had to create a work point on that plane. And if I look at my setup, that's where I placed my work coordinate system. So didn't have to change the feeds and speeds or anything like that. Just changed where I located my WCS. I talked about the thread milling changes that I made where I added more step overs to this thread milling tool path and made smaller step overs just to make sure I wasn't gonna have an issue and break this tool. And then again, Neil really helped me on this tab drill size. I went six thou per peck, no retract. So we didn't have to worry about the tool coming down in a chip and it drilled beautifully super happy with that uh, my half 13 thread fit in there great so it was a win all the way around i was really happy with the way these parts turned out i will keep on trying to improve the lighting in the cin cinematography as i move forward on my videoing 
So bear with me as I get better equipment and different lighting sources and things like that. But hopefully you guys found it helpful. And if you're on the fence about buying a Sile X7 for cutting steel, hopefully this gave you a lot of confidence to realize that it can easily go through and cut some steel. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments below. I've also been getting a lot of emails in the last couple weeks since I picked up videos again. You can also email me, kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com. Always appreciative for everybody who watches the videos and subscribes. It's very helpful. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching.